another Austin poet, because uh, this reading attracts a certain demographic, uh, <laughs> and that would be Cindy Heiser, who is co-winner of the 2014 Blue Horse Press Poetry Chapel Contest for Burning Number no. 5, Power Plant Poems. Twice nominated for a Pushcart Prize, poetry has been published in a variety of journals and anthologies, most recently Untamable City from uh, Metabolist Press in 2015. She also co-edited the Texas Poetry Calendar uh, from 2009 to 2014, as well as Bearing the Mask Southwestern Persona Poems, Dos Gatos Press 2016, which is here and is amazing, and so many of us are in it that you should all buy it. <laughs> <coughs> So I wanted to start with just the PSA about Bearing the Mask. This book, the poems in this book continue to amaze me. And to just give you a, a flavor of that, so Barbara Gregg, who was just, just reading up here, she has a poem that's in the voice of a quilt. <laughs> I mean, you know, this, poem, this, this book is just full of surprises. There are stories of people who you thought you knew. There are stories of people that you didn't know, but you need to know. So anyway, this is available here in Melbourne. Um, so I'll start with my poem in this year's Texas Poetry Calendar, and it is the week of October 15th, which is actually my birthday week. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> pretty nice, huh? I was like, wow, how did I pull that off? Oh, okay. It's called Frontal Passage. All the dragged down detritus of rivers inside, shore trash and algae after a hard rain. Scholars crew in unison to a bullhorn of thought. A football floats between rock shoal and cypress knee like a lost game. A wounded sigh heaves the heavens, the chest, the scar of a sky split open by sun. I'm going to read one of the poems that I have in uh, Lifting the Sky, also from those got those processes. Southwestern haiku and haiga, and I have a, a haiga, which is basically it's got a uh, haiku superimposed on a photograph, and this is from December, so I will read that. It's called, it, well, anyway, so the haiku reads, Rusty windmill clanks in December's wind, a song of thirsty birds. Rusty windmill clanks in December's wind, a song of thirsty birds. <laughs> and lastly, um, since we were talking about next year's poetry calendar is going to be kind of a best of, uh, it made me think of this best of collection, Big Land, Big Sky, Big Hair, which is the best of the Texas, first decade of the Texas poetry calendar. And I have a poem in here, but I'm not going to read that. I'm going to read actually a poem by um, Mary Agnes Taylor, whom I uh, sometimes refer to as my poetry grandmother. She's a late Austin poet. And she had five poems in this best of collection. <laughs> so this poem is called In My Father's Shop. I would hear him before I saw him. I would hear some strange German hymn blending with the hum of the whirring bellows. <clears throat> he would nod a welcome, his bald pate reflecting pink, and with clenched tongs take from the forge a strip of purple hot metal that seemed to pulse as if alive. On the heel of the anvil, his ball-peen hammer did a little tap dance of pings, a foreplay of the calculated blows that on the anvil's horn shape-shifted the ribbon of iron into curls and angles that defined the sacred signs of Texas cattle brands, the lazy S, the rocking R. When a brand was finished, he would burn it into one of the large double doors that had over time become giant tablets of Western hieroglyphics. A sense of burning pine lingers, as does a pity for burning hide. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, the calendar that uh, has been requested you all sign, I'm going to move it over here. So that way, as you finish reading, 
You can sign it. Way to that great idea. This is why we're a team. Um, and for those of you who you know read earlier, please you know um, be sure to sign the calendar before you take off for the night. Uh, next, I would like to bring up an Austin poet. Paul Woodruff has written fiction, poetry, opera libretti, translations, and scholarly works. Two of his poems about service in the Vietnam War were published by Maxine Hong Kingston in her Veterans of War, Veterans of Peace. His play about returning from war, Ithaca in Black and White, won an award for Best New Script in 1983, and his novella, Rosio, was a co-winner of an Austin Book Award the same year. He was interviewed by Bill Moyers in 2003 on, his, uh, on the subject of his book about reverence, and you will find his poem the week of October 15th. I think I'm in wonderful company on the same page with Cindy. Uh, my, my poem is actually to haiku. After rain, sky falls. In dry limestone, the sun finds sudden shards of blue. After rain, sky falls. In dry limestone, the sun finds sudden shards of blue. You know, the, when the limestone fills with puddles and the sun comes out. Deer come to water in a canyon choked with mist. Ghosts rise and vanish. Seems to me they have uh, a hybrid, very more, more beautiful than that, and it's the same thing. <laughs> Deer come to water in a canyon choked with mist. Ghosts rise and vanish. Mm -hmm. So I have. Uh, two poems from a yet-to-be-published, if it ever is published, chapbook. All, all the poems are uh, about antelope, or pronghorns, if you prefer to call them that. Um, this is uh, Antelope Silence. Antelope had no voice and was content, listening to the wolves, the fearless hunters, in the new moon across the valley. Singing is for hunters, Antelope said. Prey are silent. But when the moon sank, wolf song died away, and the dark around him became a wall of wolves. Then quiet as night breezes over high grass, alone, unfrightened, Antelope sang. <laughs> But the predators always make the loud noises. <laughs> you know. So the the last poem is um, it's a villanelle with a you know the two uh, refrains. The uh, uh, antelope in South Texas apparently dwindling owing to global warming and the uh, drying out of the grass. New heat from above burns the plains dry. With death on my back, it's no use to run. The grasslands are dying, and so am I. A lion spreads his claws across the sky. Wolf pounces from his place in center sun. New heat from above burns the plains dry. The few remaining fawns refuse to lie on the cracked earth. I am done eating grass. It is dying, and so am I. Black-winged air coyotes fly above our heads, waiting for the one who falls first as the plains burn dry. By empty streams, the herons do not cry. We lope towards a memory of water. None flows. Rivers are dying, and so am I. Always before, when in danger, I have run. But there is no outpacing the blistering sun. New heat from above burns the plains dry. The glass rags are dying, and so am I. <laughs> Now
Next, I'd like to bring up a Houston poet. Uh, Jerry Hamby has published in Texas Review, Concho River Review, uh, Lifting the Sky, and the Unnameable <coughs> City Anthology. Jerry was a juried poet at the Houston Poetry Fest of 2014, and his collection, Letters Drawn in Water, was published by Pecan Grove Press. Jerry teaches English and Humanities at Lee College in Baytown. He uh, also writes about various topics, including his experiences as a Texas Master Naturalist at waitingforthegreenman.blogspot.com. Uh, first, I want to thank Allison and Wade for your tireless effort. And uh, David, who's probably done more to inspire Texas writers than anybody I know. <laughs> November 11th, we commonly call uh, Veterans Day now, but used to be more widely known as Armistice Day. Um, commemorating the end of World War One. I've always been fascinated by that phrase. My Armistice Day poem is not about that war, but a very different one. Armistice Day. On the eleventh day of the eleventh month, I stand on a Mima mound, sandy rise in a pothole prairie, halfway between Houston and Galveston. Dewberry brambles invade the ridge and snare my boot, but this grassland sea still holds the line. Bunch grass, drop seed, hair on muley, dozens of species ride the swells, glide the troughs, shimmering ochre, pink and white. Bone set, camphor weed, blazing star sage. A riot of wildflowers flex the ground in purple, yellow, and blue. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read two very different poems from that. This touches back on childhood memory, which is always kind of fun to play with. Um, this will certainly date me. The, to the topic of this first poem is called Film, Film Boy. I remember the exact moment it last felt good to be a child. Before cigarettes or girls or pinching a pack of juicy fruit nudged me into the mean streets of adolescence. It was the last week of sixth grade and I was a film boy. The kid who set up the projector for health class spooled the film on menstruation that the girls watched while the boys ran laps around the soccer field. <laughs> I was training my replacement, next year's film boy, showing him how to thread the projector, how to fix the film when, it's da when it danced off the sprockets and chattered to distraction. Then, instead of rewinding the movie from reel to reel at high speed, I played it backwards, <laughs> past the lens, all 15 minutes. It began with a paper boy pedaling his bicycle in reverse, making his way up the street, retrieving newspapers, house by house. <laughs> and this one is a shameful cliche, first kiss. When Karen knocked me down on the playground, she took my breath away. <laughs> so I never saw it coming, not even when she moved in for the kill. She slammed my head into the ground and smothered me with lips, pressed so hard she cut my lip with her eye tooth. <laughs> then she just sat there dug her knees into my ribs and watched me squirm until I thought I'd cry. The last thing I saw was a pair of black Mary Janes kicking up the dust before I staggered away like a cartoon cat, stars circling my head and birds <laughs> chirping. I did not hear the taunts of my friends but saw them pointing holding their sides in exaggerated laughter as I slunk away to the monkey bars. Karen never kissed me again. <laughs> never knocked me down. Never gave me a second look. But I waited for her to.
From time to time, I'd rub my lips and feel the sting. Sometimes, I still do. <laughs> <laughs> So our final three poets are all from Austin, so let's just, you know. Uh. <laughs>